Welcome back to AgriTalk. On today's conversation, we're talking about meat handling and safety. And with me is uh, Dr. Salome Wanyoike, who is the principal at the uh, Meat Training Institute. And before we went on a break, uh, Dr. Ari was telling us the procedure of handling meat uh, from the time it is slaughtered to the time it gets to um, the transportation uh, vehicle or means. But now, uh, uh, Dr. Ari, tell us a little bit, when now the meat gets to the point of sale, what do we need to know? Or what are uh, the procedures of handling meat at that particular point? Um, when the meat arrives at the point of sale, uh, as I said, it is hoisted. Yes. And then there is, of course, the allow the portioning. Uh, some butcheries will have uh, special cuts. Others will have uh, just a sell to you, you know, they, they just cut as people come and go. Uh, now, the special cuts, uh, we also train on how to make the special cuts. Uh, and uh, so there is a lot of cutting to be done. Some people want the, the meat cut and cooked for them already at the point of sale. This is uh, what we are talking about, uh, nyamachoma, or you want the, 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 the boiro, or you want uh, such things done to your meat. Uh, so at that point, uh, what one should be looking for, first of all, at the point of sale. The carcass, normally after inspection, it has the brand. So as you buy your meat, make sure you can see the brand. Yeah? Uh, because then if the meat is not branded, you should be very careful because you don't know. Maybe this was bush slaughter and there was no inspection and now it has arrived at the point of sale. Okay? So it's very important to look at that. Then also... Um, the packaging should be correct, yeah? In the past, we have seen people use newspaper to wrap up your meat, that mm. is not acceptable. Uh, and what I see around is that most people are using the correct wrapping material. Uh, if they do use newspaper, normally they put on top of some yes. inner uh, material that they have used. I think materials are available these days for that purpose. Um, now, at the point of sale also, uh, you may see a lot of uh, 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 interesting things because there are some people who already put the spicings and all that. Of course, during the cooking, there is salting. Uh, and there are some that, for example, roast. There are those who use special roasting techniques where you don't have the open fire, and there are those who use the open fire. In any case, the non-open fire is quite healthy. But the open fire has its disadvantages. Because with meat, with, we have what we call, uh, and in most foods, we have the creation of what we call polyacrylamides. And these are, are terrible uh, compounds because they, they are actually cancer-causing agents. Right. So if you overdo roasts, and not only roast, if you overdo even chips, if you overdo foods, mm -hmm. normally they will have some level of polyacrylamides. Oh, okay. And therefore that is why it's very important to make sure that the meat is uh, prop properly handled at cooking, especially roasting, so that you don't have a chance of consuming this. Uh, now, at the point of sale also, uh, we do have certain things that happen to carcasses. Uh, at inspection, there are certain things that we notice in the carcass that can be handled in a very specific way. And sometimes that kind of meat should not arrive in a regular butchery. It should be processed in a, in a special way. Mm -hmm. But sometimes these carcasses may still find themselves in the normal butcheries. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a consumer, you may be able to see already at the time that you're getting the meat weighed and that kind of thing that something is wrong. Uh, I'm talking about things like cysts, mm -hmm. uh, what we call cysts in uh, all misos in meat. Uh, these are uh, of tapeworms. So if you go with this kind of meat home, what will happen if you don't cook it properly all, it shouldn't even be arriving at home, uh, it is the cause of tapeworms. Yeah, in, in, in some of us. So these are things that you can notice as a, as a buyer. Okay. Now, uh, at the point of sale of raw meat, there shouldn't be additives. Okay. 
there okay. shouldn't be additives at all because uh, additives, preservatives, all these are done at, at what we are calling meat processing. Uh -huh. And therefore it shouldn't be done on raw meat by just, again, people who do not understand how to mm -hmm. deal with these preservatives and additives. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay, Doctor. Right. Uh, now let's talk about what uh, the Meat Training Institute does. Let's start by, uh, let's say, for example, I want to, to join the institution. What do I need to, to know? What's the procedure of, uh, of, of applying to join uh, the Meat, in, Meat Training Institute? Okay, now the procedure for uh, uh, applying to come to the Meat Training Institute, uh, normally we will advertise mm -hmm. that we are having, uh, we, normally we have two courses per year. The first one begins in January and ends in June, just before June. And then we have another one starting in July and ends in December. The uh, courses are six months, six months. They are six months. The, the, the meat inspection one is six months. So meat inspection is six months. There will be, we send out posters, which we send to the counties. Uh, you can also call us. We also have a website, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, it may not be very, um, it may not take you through the entire application system, mm -hmm. but at least it will direct you to who to call, what to do. So you just write a normal application, attach your certificates, because we want to see that you have a certificate in animal health, and again, from a, an accredited, or rather from uh, a, a, an institution uh, that is uh, recognized by the Kenya Veterinary Board because they will be the ones uh, indicating which institutions actually offer animal health uh, in the required way. So, so attach certificates, put in your application fee of only 1,000 shillings, and send us the application. Okay. So it means uh, if I'm just from high school, I cannot join there? No, you cannot. You cannot do the meat inspection course. They ask, uh, we have very many courses. <coughs> the flagship ones are the meat inspection. Uh, we have uh, meat grading. We have abattoir instructors course. Okay. Uh, we also have, uh, uh, okay, for these three, it is paramount that you have an animal health certificate. And we have also institutions equivalent to the Meat Inst uh, Training Institute, which are offering animal health. And these are the Animal Hel Health and Industry Training Institutes. We call them AHITIS. Okay. There is one in Kabete, there is one in Nyahururu, and there is one in uh, Domba, in Kirinyaga County. So they offer animal health. The others are, there are some universities which will offer diplomas in animal health. Mm -hmm. There are several of them in this country. Uh, then we also have uh, degree courses. There are degree holders also in animal health who will come to us for meat inspection. Okay, so you have, it, uh, it, very important is the animal health uh, certificate for those three flagship courses. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we have the meat processing we have the slaughterhouse attendance course and all that. These are courses where you don't have to have the animal health certificate. You can apply now straight from school. It can even be people who have not gone that far, but they want some level of training in operating a butchery, in be, being able to work in a slaughterhouse, in even uh, flaying the animals. Uh, you can uh, want to just know how to uh, process the meat. So this meat is already inspected anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So all you need to do is to, is to process the meat. So we also train on meat processing. Okay? Uh, we also have uh, very, very short courses, like uh, for somebody who is interested in uh, preservation of the meat in using the cold chain. Yeah? How to deal with meat and the cold chain. Mm -hmm. How do you you know, how do you, for example, cool the meat and eventually freeze? It is a technique, oh, okay. yeah? 
it's a technique. So where you have a lot of refrigeration of meat, you need somebody to be trained on that, how to go about that. Okay. okay. Stunning the animals is also not for everyone. Yeah, there are people who, I mean, certainly stunning is a technique and training is required for that. Okay. So we have several short courses. Some of them are as short as two weeks. Others are longer, like uh, two and a half months. Others are five and a half months. Uh, we have meat, the meat inspection course is six months. Mm -hmm. And then we have meat processing is seven months. At some point, we had a diploma that we ran together with the University of Nairobi. Um, but it was stopped by some regulations at the university. Uh, but what we want to do is to restart the diploma course. Now, the, this diploma course should now have uh, meat inspection, it should have meat grading, it should have the abattoir instruction, yeah? So that when one gets out, they, are, they, they have one certificate, one diploma uh, certificate, and not three certificates, three okay. different certificates on meat inspection, on meat grading, on abattoir instruction, no? Okay. You have one that has all the three. Okay. But then we have the, like I would say we have Nine, fl or, I would call them uh, flagship uh, uh, courses, and then we have nearly 14 very short courses. And uh, we may not be running all of them because we run some of them on demand, yeah, like industry. You know, we want to train people on this, on processing, for example, because we are opening a new facility and we need to sell things like biltong, like uh, whatever, you know, uh, like to have some a facility like farmer's choice and uh, such processing uh, uh, plants. And we need the staff to be trained on processing. Yeah. Then we can train on processing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, having said all that, um, I was sitting here and thinking of my butcher the other day. I don't think he went for any trade. He just woke up one morning and said, I'm opening a butcher. Why is it important for him to, uh, to attend some of these courses? Um, let us begin by why they do not come for these courses. Yes, or why, yes, exactly. Why they do not come for these courses. Because for, for you to enforce something, there must be some law, uh -huh. yeah, that says that for you to operate a butchery, you must have a butchery operator's certificate. Mm. There's a certificate but, but, for butchery? Operator. No, when we train you, mm. we'll give you the certificate. Ah, okay. Yeah, to show that you have uh, been trained on butchery operation. But now there is no regulation, or rather there is no law. Yeah, there is no, um, there's nothing that's, that, 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 compels, that, me that to... compels you to come for that training. That is the beginning point. Yeah. And this is something that we are thinking about as a meat training institute, to request uh, the authorities, to the, request those uh, concerned with creating this, these laws or these statutes to put them in place so that now we have the butchery operators come for training. And once they come for training, you as the consumer will be quite comfortable with buying meat from, from, from any butchery, maybe I would say, where you can clearly see a butchery operator's certificate. Yeah, but uh, we are slowly getting there uh, because even the slaughterhouses that we have. You see, you just having a meat inspector probably is the only person that is trained. All the others are doing all sorts of things in the slaughterhouse and they are not trained. You know, why? Because again, there is nothing that compels them to come for training. But if they are compelled to come for training, they'll come for training, they will give them their certificates, yeah? Probably even with that, now the employers, yeah? The employers will be looking out for those certificates so that the slaughterhouses have now the correct personnel. And once they have the correct personnel, as you asked me, what are we doing to make sure that the meat is safe? Because once you have all this group of people untrained in a slaughterhouse, 
and can do just about anything in the slaughterhouse, even if we have the meat inspector, because it's only one, maybe all two, and there's lots of activities in the slaughterhouse, then we need somebody who is trained on slaughter operations, on, uh, on, 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 on supervision, because we, we also have the slaughterhouse supervisors uh, course, where now we have somebody who supervises the rest of the staff. But as it stands now, the meat inspector is uh, kind of has all this responsibility on them. Yeah? And if they do create supervisors among them, they are not quite uh, formally trained. Okay. Yes, so we can uh, comfortably say the problems we see in, uh, when it comes to meat handling and safety around the country is because the majority of people handling meat have not been trained. Yes, handlers have not been trained. And they, 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 they sh we should have uh, laws and regulations to, to at least to make ensure that anybody who handling meat must have some form of, of this kind of training. Exactly. So, um, the co you, you talked about three main uh, courses that you have at the institution. Yes, please. Um, the ones that are really focused on safety and handling, uh, how many are there? And what exactly do students learn when they come for those courses? Uh, so we have, uh, I would say the, we have the nine, uh, nine of them, mm -hmm. uh, well, na eight or nine, uh, but we begin, we always put meat inspection at the top. Okay. Although it is six months, then we have the, f the processing course, mm -hmm. which is seven and a half months. Then we have the meat grading, two and a half. We have the abattoir instructors, it's also about two and a half. Uh, then we have the slaughterhouse uh, supervisors or abattoir or slaughterhouse supervisors uh, course, uh, which will be about uh, two months. Uh, we will have the um, we have the uh, 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 let me let, let, let me remember the other one. Uh, so mainly it is around the slaughterhouse. It's a, a really around the slaughterhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, attendants. Wow. Yeah, attendants. These are the ones who, if, if we begin from uh, meat inspection, it's very clear. If we talk about processing, it's also very clear. Wow. We are talking about processing, like even working in like farmer's choice, you know, mm -hmm. where now you have the pork. You are processing, you're getting the sausages, you're getting the whatever. This is processing at, you know, high level not like the muturas and uh, whatever, although even that is processing, mm -hmm. okay, to some level, okay? So we, we, we have the processors, but then we have now the, 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 the instructors. They are actually instructing, supervising, and uh, managing the staff in the slaughterhouse. Uh -huh. So that is not the responsibility of the meat inspection, uh, inspector alone. Then we have now the slaughterhouse attendants. They are being trained on how now to actually do the slaughtering, stunning, slaughtering, you know, splitting of the carcass, you know, fraying, all this. They are being taught all these operations. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are not supervising now. They are the doers of the job. Ah, yes. Okay. They are the doers of the job. And uh, they, they are also, you know, supposed to, uh, to, to be able to dispose of the carcasses, condemned ones, under supervision is still their work. So you see, all these operations, they need to be trained on how even to dispose and, and that kind of thing. And take responsibility, if you are the slaughterhouse supervisor, take responsibility over the fact that the, the pit is permanently under lock and key. Okay. Yeah? So, uh, and then we, we move now to the very short courses, like I had mentioned, butchery operators, uh, flayers course, uh, standing, uh, course, uh, we have the uh, we, we, we have the, the the running of the of the cold chain. You know, like you can imagine, like farmers' choice. You have a lot of refrigeration. You have a lot. Supposing you somebody doesn't know, or rather the staff, they don't know how to do this. They are in trouble, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because maybe they do something to the meat, and the meat is really in, not very it's good for them. human consumption. Not only that it will deteriorate, mm -hmm. but it will, something will happen to it and people don't like the taste, you know, or they don't like the tenderness, you know. So, so the, the composition or rather the, 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 the texture of the meat may change and that kind of thing. So you need training in, 
in handling the cold chain. Okay. Yes. Do you also uh, provide um, refresher courses? Uh, refresher courses, yes, all the time. If even you did meet inspection, and you think that for a long time you have not uh, uh, done it, and you feel like you need really some kind of refresher, you, you, we tailor make we tailor make courses at the MTI depending on what the industry wants mm. and what the consumers of the courses want. But what we do is we must follow the curriculum. Yeah, we have curricula for each one of them, but we also tailor make according to the needs of the of, of the trainees. Okay. Yes, there is no age limit. Okay. So long as you have done animal health, you can always come back to us and do the meat inspection course. Okay. okay. And uh, you ask yourself, why am I just talking about the meat inspection course? Yes. Because uh, currently, as I said, because of lack of that law that compels people to come for the other courses, you find that uh, people will not come for the training unless it's a special request by a particular enterprise, then they come as a group. Usually the one that is running all the time is the meat inspection course. Uh, when they apply, usually we get applications from 10 to 15 ladies. And usually what we do during selection, we first of all pick all the ladies so long as they are qualified. Ah. The reason being there are so few. So pick all of them, yeah? Doesn't matter which county they are coming from. Then now you fill in the places, county-wise, and many considerations we make until we get the required number of 47. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Avi, for uh, this conversation, um, sparing time to be with us today. Learned a lot on uh, meat handling and uh, what it takes to have safe meat on our plates. And I'm sure our viewers have learned a lot and the young people watching us from home, I'm sure they'll start, uh, uh, you'll see more applications from uh, these counties uh, for them uh, looking to, to join your institution. Uh, for our viewers back at home, that is it from AgriTalk today. Until next time, goodbye.